All right, guys, Mike Turner here with ADJ. I just wanted to give you a quick little overview video of the Airstream Link uh, console system. Wanted to kind of just give you a brief overview. It's probably going to take about 10 minutes. Just go over some of the features that would be important to you and also that would be important to your customers so that you have a general idea of who might benefit from something like this. So first of all, it only works on iPad. Um, so that's important to understand. The unit will allow you to uh, wirelessly communicate with the iPad through the network that this console creates. One thing that's unique about this is that the network it creates uh, is both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. And that's kind of a big deal because as we all know with the X32 Behringer controller and a lot of other digital audio desks, a lot of them work on the 2.4 gigahertz as do wireless uh, digital microphones as well. So in a typical house of worship environment, that uh, frequency band is pretty occupied. So having the option of going with the 5 gigahertz on this is going to give you a lot more reliable wireless connection. Um, you do also have the ability to connect directly to uh, the link controller and iPad. Uh, the problem is, is because iPads come in both USB-C now and also the lightning connector. We don't include the adapter, but if you look at that little white adapter that's coming out of the iPad, that's basically a camera adapter that has a lightning jack on one end that plugs into the iPad. And then on the other hand, other end, it has a female USB uh, port along with another lightning jack port. And I use that because that allows me to connect directly to uh, the link controller uh, without having to use the wireless. And it also uh, allows me to charge my iPad while I'm using this. Uh, but again, you know, what's kind of nice about this is your customer could literally, if they're using the wireless, they could walk away uh, with the iPad and go sit in the pews and focus their lights. Or if they want to hit the looks that they've created, <clears throat> um, wirelessly, you know, from without having to be at front of house, they can do that. But anyway, that's just the description. Also, guys, this has four universes out. They're all five pin, so you can control a lot of lights with this. Um, but just to give you a quick overview, <clears throat> at the top here, you have a fixture button, a channels button, an effects button, a scenes button, a shows button, and a subs button. These are Buttons here all pertain to the submasters, and there's eight submasters. Uh, these encoder knobs here are actually quite nice. So if you have a scene that's assigned to this fader that has any sort of speed to it, for instance, a color chase or a pan and tilt effect, you can rotate this. And if you rotate it left, it'll slow it down. If you rotate it right, it will increase the speed um, to whatever your desired look is at the moment. And then if you push it in, it will go back to whatever the pre-programmed speed is. <clears throat> And in Submasters mode, um, this will act as a, uh, a blackout, and then this will act as a full-on or a bump button, depending on where this is. Of course, you've got your master fader there as well. And then you have the blackout button. And one thing that's really cool about the blackout button, if you press and hold it for three seconds, it'll automatically do a three and a half second fade to black, which is nice and smooth. Over here, you have your assignable encoder wheels, which are very nice for things like pan and tilt and focus and zooming that you might need to use at different times without having to go through those. And then of course, over here, um, you have your programmer where you can clear, save, and, and do different sort, tor sorts of things. And then of course, an audio tap button where you can have this thing listen for music or get music from the iPad and use that as the tempo. And then over here is something that you're gonna use a lot, and this is the matrix. Uh, this can be used for recalling scenes. This can be used for recalling shows. Um, it also will align with your effects uh, creator and everything else, so you're gonna use that a lot. Anyhow, that's the general overview. Currently right now, uh, we are in the fixtures page. So you'll see my four fixtures. If I wanna select a fixture, I can just press this and you'll see that it selects it. If I wanna select one through four, I press this and keep holding that and then press four, it will highlight them all. Okay, so quite nice. And if I just wanted to talk to just these two, I could do that, so forth, okay? That's how you select it. The little pictures here, um, that's kind of cool. So when you load in your patch, you can um, upload any picture you want. So that's pretty fun. Um, over here, and I will select a fixture so we know what we're talking about. And then I'll go to the channels. 
And this brings up a window here where obviously these faders align with the highlighted faders on the screen. You've got your color picker, obviously your pen and tilt, and then some other features over here. So where this works, if I wanted to um, change the color, I move this fader up, you'll see, and it does that. Okay, so that's how you would kind of do some programming. This fixture is currently in 26 channel mode, so if I wanted to get to the faders that aren't highlighted, I simply press this button, and that will navigate me further through the profile, so forth, and all the highlighted faders, again, align with that, okay? So one thing that's kind of nice, if I wanted to bring uh, fader one to full, I do that, it goes to full. If I want it to go down, I do that, it goes down. If I want now, if you notice, it's remembering a zero value. So if I don't want it to remember a zero value, I can just hit this button again, and it will go to null, which means it's not recording anything for that channel. Okay. Over here, these are what the encoders do. So one through four align with one through four here. Um, by using this section here, you can navigate what those do. So right now it's in a position preset, hue saturation dimmer. Uh, you know, you've got pan tilt, color gobo, all these things are built in, right? RGBW, uh, but you can also make your own. So this is one that I created for PTFZ. So that means this is going to be pan, this is going to be tilt, this is focus and zoom. That's a custom profile that I made that is very, very easy. You literally just tap on it and rename the file. Uh, so it's very, very simple to do that. And you can do the same thing with the name. So I'm gonna show you how this works. So I'm just gonna kind of clear everything out. Uh, I'm gonna go to another uh, profile that I made. So this one here is gonna be for dimmer, dimmer find, shutter and zoom. So what I do, I just turn this and you'll notice my dimmer goes up. I'm gonna go to my shutter, my shutter goes up and you'll notice that my fixture is on. If I wanted to zoom, I will go back to my other profile here and I will zoom. So I'll use that. And again, you'll see it zoom out really wide, right? And again, now I want to focus because that's my third one. And I will just focus. Okay. So that's kind of how simple that portion works. If that is a look that I like, I will simply go to save. It brings up this window. You'll notice my matrix here has buttons that are lit up. All the buttons that are lit up are already used. So if I wanted to save this, I'm going to go to button number, uh, I think, 11. I'm going to click 11. Over here, you can actually upload a picture if you want. If you'll notice, you could see image. Um, but I'm just going to go, oops, I'll go kind of a pink, okay? And then I'm just going to give it a name. Clear that out, and I'm just going to say test and save. And then if I wanted to give it a fade in and fade out time, I'm going to do three seconds, done, fade out, three seconds, done. And then I'm just going to hit save again, and then yes to confirm, and now that is saved. If I go to my scenes window, that is the look I recently created. And because it's currently active, you'll see that button is lit up. So if I hit that, it turns off. So I'm just gonna scan over and I'm gonna hit that button again. And you'll see it did the zoom out look. So really, really simple on how you can do that. The next part I'm actually gonna jump to right now is the effects engine, okay? So I'm gonna hit effects. And currently I'm just gonna confirm, I'm still talking to my focus spot 6Z. So again, back to effects. Again, this matrix aligns with the effects that I've already created, but I'm gonna show you how to create new ones. So to do that, you go up here, sorry, and you click pan and tilt, and this brings you to the effects generator. You've got some very simple movement patterns built at the bottom, but if you want, you can use your finger and draw whatever. Um, but a ballyhoo or a circle is a pretty common one, so I'm just gonna hit the circle. And if I press uh, play, you'll see my light is doing the circle. Now, personally, I think that's way too big. So what I can do, I can pinch to zoom and make that a little smaller, and then I can move it out here 
And if you'll notice, my light is now doing the effect out towards where my audience would be, okay? If that were something that I like, again, same process, go back to save, and I save it just like I did the other look, right? So I'm gonna go to and clear everything out. So just to recap, if I go to my scenes and I turn on my test button, and then I go to my, my effects, and I want to, sorry, let me get back into the actual buttons, I could hit any effect I've already created, right? Another thing that you could do is you could trigger the effect because this is basically a palette and then you could save it to these submasters. Um, so again, now I'm going to show you the submasters. So I'm just going to go to channels and clear everything out. So everything's blanked out. And I'm going to go to subs. Now these subs align with all of this, right? So for instance, if I wanted my uh, white look to go on, I believe, no, sorry, this one. So all of my lights went to the white, and then I want it to do the circle. I bring that up, and now my lights are doing the moving effect. And then when I'm done with it, my fixtures return to home. I'm done with them being on, so I bring down my fader, and they fade down. And just again, oop, not that one. No, not that one, which one was it? Also, just wanted you to kind of see that trick where you press and hold the blackout. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell, but I'm gonna press and hold it. And I took my finger off and it blacked it out. Really, really cool stuff, guys. I think this is something that, you know, your small to mid churches can really get behind considering the price point. It's pretty simple to understand. It gives you unparalleled benefits. Um, it looks nice, nice, you know, it's, it's a console, which is what all these churches want. And it gives them both the benefit of having software, but also hardware. I mean, this thing is just fantastic, totally worth it. Uh, anyhow, you know, my number guys, feel free to give me a call and I will help you out with anything that you need. I don't know if we're shipping demos on this yet, cause we've already sold through our first hundred units. I know we have more on the way. Um, but this is my personal sample. So if you need me to do a demo or if you need me to help you guys figure out how to sell this, just give me a holler, okay? I'll talk to you soon, guys. Thanks.